I tell you what, that's paying your dues and, and not unpacking your bags, too. This young lady certainly <laughs> has been around. We're back with Cheney University Athletic Director, China Jude. And uh, let's talk about um, your, your vision for athletics at a small uh, Division II school? Well, although we're small in student numbers, the vision is very big. Uh, when I started there at Cheney in 2007, uh, Dr. Vital wanted to make sure that we were taking care of all aspects of the department, not only graduation, uh, fiscal management issues, making sure that we're staying in NCAA compliance. Um, that was one of the challenges that we had when we first, when I first walked into the door of Cheney. We were on a three-year probationary mm -hmm. period, and fortunately, we've submitted our final report to the NCAA, um, which is officially due April 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we get off of that, it will be June of this year, and um, we're pretty much uh, free and clear and meeting our institutional controls uh, there at the institution. So fundraising is big. Um, we're really fortunate to have a wonderful athletic booster club called the C Club. Mm -hmm. We have great support from the Cheney Foundation headed by our uh, foundation chair, David Austin, and all of the alumni who really wants to, uh, to make a significant difference. And I, I definitely can't leave out the, the National Alumni Association, who's also mm -hmm. a part of that, keeping the Cheney name alive. How do you sell Cheney? How do we sell Cheney? Well, typically we always uh, start out being the first HBCU in America. We're really fortunate for that. But being the first is not always saying that we're the best. So what we're trying to do is we're putting some systems in place to say we are good in, in a lot of things. We're good in our communications department. We're getting very, very strong in our math and science departments. Um, it, it's one of those things that we're taking some time and getting those systems in place for our athletics department to be strong. We want up just getting about eight who's who among uh, colleges and universities and uh, about 30 percent of our student athletes have a, a 3.0 or better in our GPA and of course we're known for our men's and women's basketball we're the home of John Cheney and C. Vivian Stringer, so mm -hmm. they really do help both us. Both Hall of Famers. Both Hall of Famers mm -hmm. and uh, big supporters. Uh, and I, I talk to Coach Cheney at least once a week. It's a tough question for you. Well it may not be that tough but how do you keep Vivian Stringer and John Cheney working at Cheney. I mean, uh, they're gone now, but yes. I mean, that, that caliber of coach. Uh, in terms of them specifically at Cheney University? Yeah. Well, I mean, they were there, so. Yes, they were there. How do you keep them there? Well, we keep them there, be there because they believe in the institution. We we're really fortunate to have a golf tournament last uh, year mm -hmm. where both Coach Cheney and Coach Stringer served as our honorary chairs, and that, that was huge. Hmm. Um, and that was the time, of course, when Coach Stringer was inducted into the Hall of Fame, right. and that really made a significant difference in selling it. Um, with Cheney University being their first collegiate opportunity. Uh, there is a, a sense of um, loyalty in their hearts and, and they really are going to do everything in their power to utilize their notoriety to really sell the Cheney name. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. People think, you, you said easy, but let's flip that around. People think it's easy to be a major athletic director at a major, because see, even though you're Division II, mm -hmm. you're still, it's still a major, major uh, job you have to yes. do. Um, what do you have to know to be an athletic director? I know you named a lot of categories, the compliance and all of that, but you don't just throw the balls out. People think you're throwing <laughs> the balls and the tennis rackets out there. You just throw the, you know, and then you say, what do you need, uniforms? Okay, we'll order that. It's not like that anymore. No. It probably used to be like that, probably maybe 50 or 60 years ago, but today you almost have to be a corporate exec to be an athletic director and be under somebody's tutelage before you can take over like that. I definitely agree with you on that. One of the things that I, I'm very uh, fortunate to have is had the opportunity to work under some athletic directors who are pretty strong. Um, Ron Fang Mitchell from Coppin State University, he served as a basketball coach as well as an athletic right. director and I played a big part in the administration as well as some other universities that um, really helped strengthen me but really for the most part I do consider myself to be a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting when I do explain to people I am an athletic director they think I am a physical education teacher right. um, which is nothing wrong with which that is, which is nothing wrong with that <laughs> I think that um, our educational system definitely need more physical education teachers especially with uh, what's going on with child obesity and things like that but we are business people so we definitely need to know budget we do need to know compliance marketing and promotions selling the brand of a university mm -hmm. and so you have to wear many hats and, and I 
I think it's kind of interesting being just one of very few athletic directors in the country. Uh, at times, that it, are it women. That are women. Right. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. that are women. Um, it's it's a bit of an advantage. Sometimes I have to kind of mm -hmm. stroke a little bit just right. to get someone to warm up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But really, for the most part, once we start cutting deals, once we start making things happen, I am a businesswoman, and I think that everyone needs to understand that that we can sit at the board table with any of the big boys to make it work too, regardless of the number of students. I am sure in the that uh, Debbie Yao has run into that at yes. the University of Maryland, and uh, when they all is is it kind of a chauvinistic kind of business? <laughs> Don't um, step I on can, any toes, yeah, but I mean, you know. I can say from from time to time, I've been in some situations where there have been some remarks that I would say mm. it's um, borderline, mm. you know, chauvinistic. And, um, you know, we try to do everything. And, and, and all of the 13 uh, uh, black female athletic directors, those who know each other, we, we get together at conventions and we share well, our How do you get their respect if, if, if that's even an issue? Um, show your work. There you go. You show your work. Um, you make sure you, you dot your I's and you cross your T's. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that firm handshake, it needs to to dis uh, demonstrate that you are a business person first mm -hmm. and um, a female second. So money is green. That's right. why I'm wearing green now. Money it, yeah. is green. <laughs> and that's what we talk about in graduating those student athletes mm -hmm. and making a good name for our university and making our president look good, too. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you how do you work within the guidelines of the NC2A? Uh, the NC2A says you can play with a, one kind of an average. The school, like I went to Howard University, mm -hmm. which was really uh, hardcore. Um, but sometime it, I mean, even Harvard goes by yes. the NC2A. That's true. But HU kind of goes with their own thing. You have to have a certain GPA to even get on the field. Right. I mean, you can't even practice in the spring with less than a two when you're not even playing. I don't like that myself. But I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying is that if you're going to be able to compete, right. you've got to give kids an opportunity that are a little slower maybe. Uh, and, you know, some of your – Outstanding uh, CEOs weren't all that great in college, but I mean, if they can just, we're not talking about spout out mediocrity. Right. I'm still, I'm saying, you know, if you're one eight, one nine, and you're right there, which the NC2A says you can play with, you know, how do you work that? Well, you have to keep in mind the NCAA prior to um, the passing of, of Dr. Miles Brand, who's the the, uh, the president there. Um, there have been a lot of concerns in regards to academic performance, and that is the reason why the APR uh, was put out. The, the a APR is the academic performance rate, and that was for Division I. And this is to make sure that universities were utilizing student athletes for their student status first and their athletic status second. And retention and graduation rates was a number one priority. So I think it's really important for everyone to understand that institutions put um, policies and expectations in place to protect the student as well as protect the good names. Howard University is a phenomenal institution and of course they're known for their doctors and engineers and things like that and maybe not always at the upper echelon of athletics but they have the opportunity to play and they really should be very fortunate to play but no institution should be superseding any NCAA expectations but it is the athletic director as well as the president's responsibility to see how there could be a win-win right. to make sure that you give those student uh, athletes the opportunity to play as well as maintain their grade point average. There are over 3,000 institutions in America, so um, they can pick one, mm -hmm. one that fits their billet. Well, one of the top high school football coaches in the country is a Cheney graduate, Craig Jeffries at Dunbar High School here in D.C., I throw that out there. You know. <laughs> Lines are open for your calls with China Jude at 703-387-1020. Check out what's coming up on the Sports Talk schedule. Got a little frog in my throat. Work with me. It's a chance to see Cheney University Wolves or the Howard Bison or the Georgetown Hoyas. The Penn Relays in Philly. It's coming up next month at the University of Pennsylvania. It's a carnival of skill and speed from world-class athletes from around the country. If you want to see the ultimate in athletic performance, go to Philly. Check it out. It's big.